Chapter 16. Name. Capricorn Anderson. I knew something was wrong the minute I got off the bus and walked to the Donnellys. The Saturn was in the driveway, which meant that Mrs. Donnelly was home early, and the TV was off, even though TNT would be on in five minutes. Sophie and your mom were in the kitchen. I heard Mrs. Donnelly's voice first. Oh, honey, don't feel bad. You know how it is. I hurried into the room. What happened? Is everything all right? An empty Dasani bottle missed my ear by inches. Get out of here, Sophie shrieked. Mind your own business. Sophie, her mother exclaimed in horror. You apologize to Cap. In answer, she leapt out of her chair and raced for the stairs. Mother, don't you dare tell the freakazoid anything about this. She pounded up to her bedroom and slammed the door. I looked at Miss Donnelly. What did I do? It was a silly question. What did I ever do? Nothing. And Sophie still treated me as if I'd crawled in from the septic tank. Please forgive Sophie, Miss Donnelly begged. She's just had some bad news. I was worried. Did something happen to Mr. Donnelly? Nothing that hasn't happened before, she sighed. He took off without so much as a goodbye. But what about the driving test, I protested. A license might have been just a piece of paper, but to Sophie, it meant everything. She shrugged. We'll just have to reschedule for when I can take her. My ex-husband is not a terrible person, but he doesn't see things through. He rolls into town, gets everybody's hopes up, and then he's gone until the next time. Then he does it all over again. I learned my lesson and got off the roller coaster. My daughter hasn't figured it out yet. I felt terrible for Sophie. She was really crushed. Mr. Donnelly left town so suddenly that she hadn't even gotten her bracelet back from the engraver. Who knew if she'd ever see it again? But of course, it was a lot more than losing a silver bangle that upsets her. That upset her. Life certainly gets complicated when you know more than one person. I can only imagine what it would be like when I knew 1100. On Trigonometry and Tears, there was a character named Raishan, who really bothered me. He didn't cheat on his girlfriend like Nick, or spread computer viruses just for fun like Aurora, but his irresponsible behavior was almost impossible to bear. Sophie definitely didn't agree. What do you care? It's a TV show. Her mood had been in free fall since Mr. Donnelly's departure. But if he doesn't retake the SAT to bring up his score, the University of Florida is going to withdraw his acceptance, I exclaimed. She looked at me pityingly. So? He hasn't even started studying, and he overslept and missed the practice test. That's what they do on TNT, she explained. They take perfectly normal people and turn their lives into pawn scum. That's why it's fun to watch. If everything was perfect, there'd be no story. But what's Raishan going to do next year? I persisted. Probably find a part on a different show. He's an actor. Because Sophie had been watching TV her whole life, and not just a few weeks like me, it was easier for her to watch Raishan throw his whole future away. For me, it was agony. Rain always said that when we judge others, we're really judging ourselves. That was the real reason Raishan ex- upset me. How could he think his SAT scores were going to go, by them- go up by themselves? How could he ignore the fact that he was about to lose his spot in college? It was all too familiar. As 8th grade president, I was in charge of the Halloween dance, and I was giving it the Raishan treatment. I was ignoring the whole thing, almost as if I thought it might go away. Then, on TNT, it all worked out for Raishan. One of Aurora's viruses found its way into the admissions department computer at the University of Florida, wiping out half their records. All that were left indicated that Raishan was accepted. He ignored his problem, and the problem just sort of melted away. With a growing sense of wonder, I realized that the same thing was happening with the dance. I was still doing nothing, yet somehow, the arrangements were being made. Students would come up to me in the halls, they would sing along when I played guitar in the music room, they would join in on my morning Tai Chi routine, and then they would volunteer to help. So many people were working on the party that I was beginning to think we were actually going to have one. No wonder TNT was such a popular show, it was practically an instruction manual for life. Garland Farm followed simple logic. You plant tomato seeds, you get tomato plants. No seeds, no tomatoes. Cause and effect. But a real school was so messy and random that solutions sometimes fell into place by sheer luck. It was almost like getting tomatoes without first planting seeds. I thought I'd never get used to the outside world, with its chaos and clutter. But with millions of puzzle pieces being tossed up into the air, it really did stand to reason that the occasional one would come down in the right place. That was why Rashan would go to college and Sea Average would have its Halloween dance. 
Even Rain would have to admit that there was something kind of impressive about that.